Well, it's time for our first hot topic, and we have been joined by Mr. Kola Walulua, Deputy Director of SERA. SERA there is a socioeconomic rights and accountability project, and they are opposing life pensions for former governors like Mwike Umahi uh, in this administration. Good morning to you, Mr. Kola Walulua, Dari. Good to have you join us. So I know that we have about eight former governors in this administration who are working with President Bola Tinubu in, you know, as ministers. And we also have nothing less than 13 governors in the 10th Assembly. But talk to us about what you are doing right now with regards to this topic we are treating. I know you haven't gone to court yet. We know that you usually go to court. But at this point, you are just threatening to go to court. You haven't gone to court. Give us the full gist of this matter that's unfolding. Thank you very much. It, it, turns, so, so it sounded funny when you said that uh, you know we are going to go to court. <laughs> yeah. it, we, we do not like to go to court, and I am sure that we've spoken about it on this platform before now. If the president eats the voice of reason and ideas in the voice of the people in adherence to the laws he had sworn to uphold, there will be no reason to go to court. You mm. would go to court if uh, the president does not obey the law in this instance. And that is what will compel us to uh, embark on another public investigation. But the issues are very simple and clear. These, the president has appointed among the 40 plus individuals he has appointed to hold of public office as ministers, has appointed about eight uh, former governors as ministers. Uh, these are governors who are drawing pay, some of them uh, uh, who are drawing pay from their respective states. Uh, under what is called pension laws for those states. And that would also mean that they would also be earning pay as ministers. And so we need to understand clearly that the Constitution forbids this practice. This is not about morality. This is not about whether Seraph likes it or not. It is about the law. And which law am I referring to? Uh, that is the fifth schedule of the Constitution, paragraph 2A, is very clear that and it speaks in essence that uh, a public officer will not draw pay from uh, that of one public office while he, or, while he or she is also drawing pay, and that means remuneration allowances or whatnot, from another public office. The law is very clear in this regard, and that is the Constitution. Uh, and in this instance, the, the definition of a public officer includes the president, includes ministers, including, includes governors and deputy governors, and what have you. So clearly, it is against the law. And the reason why we've written to the president is very simple. He is the one that appointed these former governors as ministers, of course. So he, he has that leverage and control over them to instruct them not to earn pay as ministers while they are still earning pay from the pension law of the state. And you will recall that Sarah had gone to court in 2019, mm. being the basis of our advocacy, being the, the unlawfulness, the legality of pension laws being paid by state. But these are laws that have been validly made, as it were, at the state level. But in this instance, the least the president can do is to instruct and ensure that those he has appointed as ministers stop collecting pension in their states while they continue to end pay from the state as ministers. And uh, you would understand the context. In the face of growing poverty, the rising cost of living, the funds that they are earning from the state as former governors and deputies could be put to better use for the benefit of Nigerians. Uh, health, the health sector would, would be a very good way to use those funds. Education, what about various infrastructure development? We don't have the state level. And that is why we return to the president. And if he does what is right in the interest of Nigerians, the lawyers want to uphold the constitutional oath, then there will be no reason to go to court. Well, thank you for making it clear to us that it is indeed a thing of the constitution. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Um, it's a good thing you're a lawyer. How, how is it that we are finding ourselves in a situation where we run a democracy and the laws of the land are not respected? It is unfortunate. It is one of those things that uh, is happening. But unfortunately, I do not think we have found ourselves. I think it is more of a matter of where we have brought ourselves. Since 1999, since this round of democracy, there has been persistent and growing disdain for the rule of law. It started as something as small 
as not to obey this uh, disobeying the federal character in appointments then it grew to disobeying others of court and of course it has become a huge monster where public officers depending on the nature of influence and power that they have disregard the laws of the land as will even cut judgments and not spare people do what they like and these are public officers and public institutions that want people to obey the law and that itself has created this problem that we found ourselves that the president who is the chief, he is the commander in chief uh, of the armed forces, he's, he's the head of Nigeria. He is so he's supposed to have the best of legal advice. He has an attorney general, he has the best of advice and he has will disobey the provisions of the constitution and allow those that he has appointed to flagrantly disobey the constitution. Will the president say that he doesn't know the position of the law on these matters? And it's in the constitution. Everyone has access to it, he can read it, and he can is to instruct these individuals from ending this pay. But this is this perhaps is the least of our problems. We've had much more greater problems mm -hmm. that we've seen as an outcome of disobedience to the rule of law. This is one of those instances. We have a national assembly like in Fortuna. Mm -hmm. We have more than 10 people in the national assembly presently who are former governors and deputy governors who are still drawing pay from their respect from the pension laws and then they are in the national assembly ending another round of, of huge pay. And so it's not even about morality. It is clearly against the law. Okay, um, let's just know how far so far. Um, have you had an interaction? How has the response of the presidency been uh, to your, your, your request? I've not had the privilege of having an interaction with the president. I do not belong to his ruling party, and I don't think that uh, we could be afforded that privilege. But, but that is not necessary, perhaps. What is necessary is that pres the president gets the feedback from the people, uh, from various sources. And that is why he has ministers, special advisors, who, of course, uh, make sure that he's informed of this thing. And it's not really hard. If the president can traverse the length and breadth of this country while he was campaigning for office and making those promises, he was listening to the feedback of the people. Why would it be hard for him to now hear back from the same people? Uh, as represented by Sarah for this is really this demand is not in the trust of Sarah, it's in the interest of over two hundred million of Nigerians mm. who will benefit from the opportunity cost for the use of these funds in their respective states. And so I, we expect him to listen to the voice of reason, call it the voice of law in this instance. So call it the voice of the people too. You will not be wrong and do what is right. But we've not had any kind of feedback from the president, even though we know that the correspondence we've sent to the president has been delivered. And this again shows where citizens must play their own role in this kind of conversations. It is not enough to have an opinion about it. It is very important that we voice our opinion to make sure that we hold those in public office accountable, including the president. Don't forget, in the next three to four years, the president, whether he wants to run for another term or not, will have to get the feedback from the people. So that act of holding people in public office to account starts from when they begin to campaign, when they win the elections, all to the time they leave office, including when they leave office. Because even when they leave office, they are still answerable to Nigerians for what they did with power that was conferred on them when they were holding that office. And that's why Nigerians must take this advocacy now and continue to bring the much needed pressure to bear on the president to do what's right. Particularly, the citizens of those states who do not have their governors appointed as ministers and they are still drawing pay. Like I've mentioned, these funds could be put to better use that will benefit the most uh, people in those states. The number of after school children continues to grow. There are health infrastructure that are more important in these states. And most of these states are even owing pension for those who work for the states, for, so, for those who have worked for the states for, for years. They can't even pay minimum wage. So it, it, it really doesn't stand to reason. And I hope that you don't take this up. Under former President uh, Muhammad Buhari, about seven former governors were in his cabinet. And only recently uh, did we hear former Ogun State Governor, who is in the Senate, Benga Daniel, uh, announcing that he no longer wishes to collect the pension. So I, and I imagine that those former governors all were receiving the pensions from the state, as well as what they were enjoying at the national level. And so here you are kicking against. And it's, it's probably very um, important not probably. I think it's very important that you, you brought this up because it's become a norm uh, for former governors to become senators. I mean, yes, yeah, senators and, and ministers in the country. Um, the National Assembly has become like a retirement heaven for ex-governors. So how, how far-reaching 
do you see this move of yours? Do you see it probably um, putting a check on this trend where former governors, instead of retiring and going back to their businesses and doing other things, go to the National Assembly or become ministers at the national level? I think we need to understand this clearly. Sarah is not against individuals who have held former public, public offices, either as governors, as the governors, or whatnot, from holding other public offices. It is, uh, it is uh, their right as Nigerians to contest or even lobby to be appointed or elected to the public offices. What is clearly against the law is NMP as former governors and deputy governors by reason of the pension laws and continuing to earn in those public offices, either as members of the National Assembly, uh, ministers, or anywhere else, any public office, because that is clearly the intention of paragraph 2A of the fifth schedule of the Constitution. And that is what we need to understand. And we've seen many examples set, for instance, by uh, uh, Mr. Ben Gadalia, Colin Moran Ben Gadalia, he's, he's a member of the House of, uh, member of the Senate. And he, he did share the correspondence with Sarah, which of course he also made public, where he stated his intention uh, or called his directives. Uh, to uh, for the state government to stop paying his pension, which uh, appears a lot of but that is not enough. Those funds he has earned in that don't need to be refunded. And at least that's the right step in the right direction. And so if we have uh, members of the National Assembly also told that line, and we have even ministers told that line, at least for the next three to four years where they uh, hold the office as members of the National Assembly or as ministers, their states will be spared the burden of billions of naira. And to put this in context, I'll just mention two or three of the pension law in some states. In Kobe states, for instance, mm -hmm. a, a former governor is entitled to a 300 million executive pension benefits for the ex governor. He's also entitled to a 30 day paid travel expenses annually to any country of his choice, which is why. That also applies this, uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the deputy government. In Abia state, for instance, a former governor is entitled to 100% of his salary, salary of the incumbent. Which is whatever the incubator earns is what the former government earns. And it includes an official car, a police orderly, two operators of the police, and allowances for cooks, drivers, and stewards. And so these are just excerpts of what. And I, I would like to mention uh, Jigawa State because we have a former governor who is now presently a minister. Uh, it's under the Jigawa State pension law. Uh, the government is entitled to the same salary as the incubator. And two vehicles that to be replaced every four years. Including a six bedroom apartment, a furnished office, two personal assistants not below grade 10, and two drivers. All of these are the expense of the state. And these are just, uh, these are not the full details of that. I've mentioned three states now. And we have more than 20 states who have these pension laws in their state. So you, you can understand the drain. The president cannot continue to tell us to tighten our belts as good citizens to deal with these policies uh, in the long term. And then we see public officers. Wasting state funds. This is profligacy at the highest order. It is just not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So it is not only unlawful, it is not only immoral. In common sense and logic, it is clearly not sustainable. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kola Walalua Dari, for your time. Time will not allow us to go further, but it is clear what you're after. You're not against them having any kind of political office, you're against the pensions, the exotic cars, the whole mansions, and all the other things that the pension laws in their different states allows them. Of course, many Nigerians have kicked against some of these pension laws, but that's a matter for another day. Thank you for your time this morning uh, and wishing you the best in your pursuit. Kala Deputy Director Sarah.